on KZOX LP Maryville. This is the Bearcat Pre-Game Show. I'm Wiley Ray. Alongside me is Jackson Phelps. Jackson, a pleasure as always to have you here with me. Always a pleasure, Wiley. A great Saturday again here for some Bearcat basketball. I'm completely excited to be here with you again for in yet another week of Bearcat Pre-Game. And not only is that the case of a great home atmosphere doubleheader between the Northwest Missouri State Bearcats and the Northeastern State Riverhawks, it is also Senior Day here at Bearcat Arena, so we'll be talking about some seniors here as the show progresses, but let's talk about women's basketball, Jackson, the best season they have had in a very long time. Yes, Wiley, this team has improved so much over the last couple of years, you know, a lot of times people have been talking about Northwest being a predominantly men's basketball school, but I think that that tail has been flipped a little bit with this women's team. They came in here and surprised a lot of us, me included, with this season. Um, you know, they're doing a great job and, you know, practice and they're putting that into play. So I love getting to be able to watch this women's team every week. Yeah, no doubt about that one. When you look at this women's team, they truly have the grit. They have the intensity and they just give 110% effort as we go through this season. And as we get closer to the MIAA tournament and then possibly the NCAA tournament, Thursday night, the women's team clinched the MIAA tournament just like the men's yes. team did. Um, but so we get both Bearcat squads at Municipal Auditorium in Kansas City, Missouri come March 6th through the 10th. It'll be a great atmosphere for MIAA basketball. You know, Kansas City Municipal Auditorium is something special for the MIAA to be put on that kind of stage. The, the arena gets packed and it gets really loud. So being able to see both of the Bearcats there for the first time in a while, I think it's just going to be so fun to watch it. And we were talking about the girls team and how they've surprised a lot of us. They come in here 13-5 and five in the MIAA, best in a while, and 19-5 and five overall. So this the the script has been flipped here in Bearcat Arena for this bear, for this women's Bearcat team. Yeah, you couldn't write a better script for this Bearcat women's team along with the men's team. Just taking a quick look at this head-to-head -head battle between the Bearcats and the Riverhawks earlier this season. They faced in the big tally, a lot of us like to call it, Tahlequah, Oklahoma, where the Bearcats pulled off a squeaker of a win, 71-69 to over the Riverhawks in their home territory, where Jana Green set a season high at that time, 17 points, and Molly Harnett recorded a double-double with 10 points and 12 assists. Yes, you know, when you talk about that, beating them in their home arena in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, you know, and it's going to be even harder for the Riverhawks to try and just pull out a win in Bearcat Arena because we talk about it every single week. The environment and the atmosphere and the energy that is brought in to Bearcat Arena is something so special. So the Riverhawks are up against an even tougher battle than it was at home for them. So this is going to be a great opportunity for the Bearcats to go 2-0 and against the Riverhawks here. You know, you're talking about a great opportunity for the Bearcats. Let's talk about a great opportunity for the Riverhawks. Northeastern State has been riding a three-game winning streak against Emporia State, Washburn, and Rogers State. And the Riverhawks also have three players averaging double figures on the season. Haley Jones with 13 points a game, Courtney Lee with 12 points a game, and Tori Alford with 11 points per game for this Riverhawks offense. A big, a big force when you have three people averaging double digits. Yes, you know, when you're talking about those players that, you know, are averaging all those triple doubles and just getting the ball in the hands for the Riverhawks to score, they're definitely going to have to rely on them and use them here in Bearcat Arena because this defense, the women's Bearcats team's defense is actually one of the best in the MIAA that I've seen. Um, they don't allow too many points, and they keep – uh, their turnovers, you know, less on their side, but they also love to get turnovers on uh, the Bearcats side. So the Riverhawks are definitely have to bring their A game and rely on those players to be able to come in here and get those baskets for them because this is a definitely one of the tougher teams to come in here and play against inside Bearcat Arena. Yeah, despite the records these two teams have, no matter, we've talked about this week in, week out, and I'm going to say it one more time, just, just for old time's sake, the MIAA is a dogfight of a conference, especially as we reach the spring season or March Madness. It definitely, right. you know, instead of March Madness, it's MIAA Madness when it comes to this. We saw an upset earlier this week in the men's side of things, but we'll talk about that later on in the pregame show. But when you look at the women's team and just how they perform, they perform on all cylinders. They yes. like to move the ball around. They like to they like to fight in, fight out, find that pass inside. And if that pass isn't there on the inside, they kick it back out. And a lot of times, they cash it in for a three or a long two. That's right. This women's team definitely brings the grit to the to the table here against even tougher opponents. I mean, two weeks ago we saw them play some really hard teams, even though they lost uh, to North, you know the UNC, to UNA, University of Northern Oklahoma, UNA. Yeah, <laughs> um, but. 
Um, so definitely they play some tough teams, but they also just love to bring the grit every single game. They play the transition uh, passes really well. Rebounding can be a little bit of a struggle because they are predominantly undersized between some other teams. Yep. But they still manage to get the you know the boards with Kelsey Fields. Um, and you were talking about the kickouts. They always manage to find someone on the perimeter for a three, and they love to shoot them. You know, even if they don't go in, they still continue to shoot the ball over the game. They don't let it affect them. And you know, they're going to get some you know some shots to go in that many people are like, whoa. That should not have gone in. <laughs> and, and you know, you talked about shots going in and kicking it out for threes. Two big key factors, and these are two big Bearcat names to look out for. But as long as the other offense can, you know, give them the ball and help them out, they'll be just as good as any of the other ones on the court. Molly Hardnett averaging 13 points per game, and then Kaylee Keston averaging 12 points a game That's right. for the Bearcats. Then it doesn't fall off far from there. Lindsey Kelderman, one of the twins, averaging eight points per game. Her sister, Peyton Kelderman, averages five points per game just kind of looking at how the Kelderman sisters play but you know even though the averages don't look like it these two these these teams can they can play with the best of them they can score the ball any night of the day that's right you're talking about the Kelderman sisters and yes those two are definitely those guys on the perimeter that are going to get those three points but a name that has been surprising me and a lot of Bearcat fans recently Lainey Joseph she's been bringing it to the table yep. the last couple of weeks um, and really filling her role as kind of like that sixth man getting points off the bench and that's super important in college basketball because usually you like to stick to your starting five you don't really move along from your starting five but having Lainey Joseph as that extra option for the Bearcats in my opinion has helped them a many immensely with these last week's wins and coming to the end here clinching the MIAA and getting their best record in so long so just because they have their starting five and they know how to work with each other having that sixth man like Laney Joseph has helped so much for the Bearcats and it's and it's been a similar situation with the men's side where you're starting to see them that sixth man sixth woman or even some of them bench players really yes. start to shine but Laney Joseph has put, been putting on a clinic these yes. last few games and I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. Not at all. You know, when you get a player like that off the bench, you're kind of reminds me of like Jeremy Lin. You know, you get a player and you just don't, you don't, str you don't stray away because if you know they're going to make shots and you know they're going to play hard. I mean, I've seen Lainey Joseph. You know, when the team is down, I mean, I still see her energy continue to just vibrate throughout the whole entire team. So having a player like Lainey Joseph is super special for the Bearcats, and especially coming into the final weeks and final games. I don't expect any of this to stop for the Bearcat team. Yeah, when you look at these two teams, Bearcats really have the edge um, on paper, record-wise. But when you look at the grit, the energy, and the intensity both of these teams have, they both want to win this game. Yes. And in, Bearcat, in a Bearcat arena, it's going to be a packed house as things are already starting to fill up. And the energy, the vibes are immaculate. Just everything shouts a big Bearcat win for both the men's and women's team. 100% Wiley. I think that with arena, like we were just talking about, Bearcat arena being one of the hardest places to play in the MIAA, and it, and, and it really is. I think it might be the toughest place to play because it is a little bit smaller than some, but it gets packed and loud. Yes. So the energy vibrates throughout the whole entire arena, and it gets into the opposing team's players' heads. I've seen it with the cats and blazers <laughs> over there and the band who are always chanting. I've seen it get into players' heads, but the Bearcats love that, and I think playing at home has been the biggest thing for the Bearcats this season. Yeah, you talk about you talk about the intensity and the energy the fan base has here, the Bearcat faithful Bearcats. Bearcat Nation and two big two big pieces sit right by each other on one end of the court is the Bearcat Blazers <laughs> and, oh. the, and the, the pet band they they're always hollering something waving oh some man. sort of flag um, so far my favorite chant has been when they're shooting free throws and they'll go miss 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 and then they miss it and then they'll go one for one one for one it reminds me of the old baseball uh, the ball four chant that yep. Texas A&M used to always do. Yeah. Just some crazy traditions you see here at Northwest Missouri State. And then, you know, once again, the Blazers just coming out, doing doing everything yes. every sports fan loves to watch when it comes to college basketball season. Exactly. And it just, the intensity, the energy is going to be what sets this, these two teams apart and how they can how they can handle it. And, you know, that just truly makes college basketball so special here at Northwest Missouri State, along with other things. But having our own traditions here, like the Blazers and the band, it truly makes college basketball a fun experience for everyone to come in here and enjoy. So very excited for this women's game and <laughs> hopeful for yet another Bearcat win. There's a little bit of a hot streak going on, so we're hoping for another win. Um, they got the keys. They got their players. They got everything that they need to excel throughout the end of this season into the MIAA tournament. So I'm excited to see how it goes. You know, you, you mentioned keys, so I got to ask you, Jackson, yes. what are what are two out of the three keys to victory? I got, I got one for you, but what are two out of the three? Number one, you were talking about the, the atmosphere in the arena, yep. correct? So my, my second one is 
let Kelsey Fields down low, grab some, get, put her down low and let her stay down there. Because if you get her uh, the ability to get boards, she will. And she'll be able to get them on the offensive side and defensive side. I think offensive rebounds are the most important thing in college basketball. Yeah. Second chance points. So I think if you let Kelsey Fields sit down low and let her get those boards, I think Northwest is going to be able to get so many extra points this game. So I also think that will be good. Uh, the third and final, um, I'm just going to say play your passing lane smartly, okay? Because yes. any defense here in the MIAA uh, I've seen the girls play against, they're always so aggressive inside the, the passing lanes. If that is trying to cut it across the baseline, if that's trying to just swing it around the arc, someone might split through. So I would just say read your plays, read your players, and read your passes, the three plays, players, plays, passes. So <laughs> if you focus on those things for the Bearcats, Focus on the arena. Focus on the energy. You know, get in with the crowd. Like, play with this heart of, you know, we're not going to have any more home games after this and next game. Like, these are the last times we'll be inside Bearcat Arena. So use that. Get some boards. You know, don't let them out-rebound out you, especially when you're out in front of the block. If you're already, you know, sized up against them and you allow them to get a rebound, that's that's not that's not good basketball. But I'm playing the passing lanes. So, Wiley, I think those three – good win for the Bearcats today. You know, Jackson, I think those are three great keys. And we talk about the passing lanes. That has been a big Achilles heel yes. for this Bearcats offense is when they get, they just sometimes don't make them full passes with intensity or with the, the strength they need. And so sometimes jumping across that line and jumping across the lane or in front of that passing lane just kind of breaks out that offense and kind of tears down this offense at times. Yeah. Then he talks about the energy. Obviously, that's that's the biggest thing. It's senior day, and then we got pink out next week against, you know, the rival from the south, Missouri Western. It, it, the, in, the intensity of these next two games, especially for these seniors, is going to be at an all-time max, and if not, then it needs to be at an all-time max right. by next weekend. But, that is right. But moving on to the men's game, the nightcap of the evening, the Bearcat men's, who are nationally ranked number 11, taking on the River Hawks. River Hawks kind of sitting in that middle of the pack this season. Bearcats right now control their destiny and their seed. Right now, they are one of two schools in the MIAA who have clinched an MIAA berth in the tournament. The other one, Fort Hayes State, who the Bearcats beat in Bearcat Arena early on this month. But Jackson, this game is another really good game and also another chance for the Bearcats to not settle um, and, and look past this team. Well, you know, Wiley... When it comes to the men's side of the game, each game is so competitive, at least to start the game out. On Thursday, I was not able to be here to witness the game, but I was following along with my phone. At the halftime, it was 39-32, to 32, and I was thinking, okay, the Bearcats start out the first half a little bit slow. But I said, let them go in the second half because they are most they are just such a, a heavy second-half team, shot the best field goal percentage in school history, and finished out the game winning by more than 15 points. So I was super happy to see that and just seeing that they're continuing this energy and continuing this level of play coming at the end of the season. So seeing this men's team still perform like that, I have no doubt that tonight will be a great game for them and just an, an, another opportunity for them to get some of these extra players, these extra bench players, and before next week, as you said, Mo West, which is probably the biggest game yet of the year so far left for the Bearcats. Yeah, and you talked you talked a little bit about history there, talking about how they they beat um, the previous record by one percent. The shooting record was one percent. Seventy three percent is now the new record. Seventy two, the old record. But another another historical stat for you, and I love these. When you look at the historical matchups between the Bearcats and the Riverhawks, Bearcats hold a seventeen in one lead all time against Northeastern State, and the Bearcats have won 16 straight since Northeastern State has joined the MIAA, and they once again are own 15 against the Bearcats. Bearcats, you know, have done a pretty good job of defending their home court. They're undefeated from home on the season, looking to avenge their kingdom and keep it safe for another year. Yeah. But this team, this Riverhawks team, sit nine and 14. They aren't a team to be messed with as they pulled off an upset earlier this week in St. Joseph. That was the other thing I was going to you know, mention is that this any game given in the MIAA, we talk about it every time, and I'm going to say it one more time for the people <laughs> at home. The MIAA is the hardest conference to play in Division Two, and I think other than the Big 12 and the Big East, the hardest to play in college basketball. So with, a, with an upset like that, it doesn't surprise me because any given game is any given win for any team that's wanting to give their 100%. So... But the Riverhawks are coming into Bearcat Arena. We talk about it all the time. This is one of the hardest places to play 
in all of college basketball, in my opinion. The energy in here gets so loud, and <laughs> it backs the Bearcats up, you know, pretty well. Yeah. So they are sitting 9-14, and 14, and that record coming in here is going to be tough. This game is going to be probably the hardest game for them this season by far. The Bearcats are such a hard team to go and play away, and we just talked about it, 9-0 here to start out the year in Bearcat Arena. So Riverhawks have a big test, but... This is like the ACT. It's a test that you don't mess with. So this is <laughs> definitely going to have to be um, another another day for the Bearcats to bring their A game. I just say drop all records. Records don't matter when it comes to here in the MIAA. So I'm excited for it. And the last time these two teams played, Northwest sat number 19, so top 20 in the rankings. They're up eight spots since then at number 11. But they beat Northeastern State in the big tally, Tahlequah, Oklahoma, 78-65. And then... Looking right now, as we mentioned, um, Missouri Western got upset by Northeastern State 62-61 off of a game-winning shot with two seconds to go. Oh, so right now, if you are Northwest looking at that and going, okay, these guys are red hot. They went into halftime against the Griffins. Both teams scored 29, came back with a, with a game-winning shot with two seconds to go by Hartloff. You really got to look at who's hot and who's not in this right. game. And with the absence of Wes Dreamer and Blake Jan Danicek, you really, you really got to step some guys in. And Thursday, the Bearcats did that. But with a red-hot team, do you think the Bearcats are going to be utilizing their bench a lot more tonight? I definitely think so, especially if they get out to a hot early lead in the first, which they are on a first-half team like I talked about. But let them go in the second half, and I definitely think they're going to get you know guys like Luke Moustakis and Radigan back into the game and try and let them get some more minutes. But I think... With that 62-61 to 61 victory for Northeastern State, last second victory, I think if Northwest can come in here and shoot like they did on Thursday night, it'll be no problem for them to come in here and get a win because Northeastern State loves to kind of play in that 60s range, but we've seen Northwest come in and beat teams with 100 points, 80 points. So I think if Missouri, uh, Northwest Missouri State can play their game, this game shouldn't be too much of a struggle, but they have to just bring that same energy as they did on Thursday. Yeah, when you look, when you look more in depth, at the Bearcats lineup. You know, we talked about West Dreamer and Blake Danichek being out, but it still doesn't stop there. You got Bennett Sturts averaging 15, and then you got Mitch Mascari averaging 10.2, a name that a lot of people probably counted out, but you should never count out exactly. anyone like Mitch Mascari. Mascari putting up a clinic once again, similar to Laney Joseph, yes, finding himself in the starting lineup. You know, Mitch Mascari, I've always talked about him being like a lethal Steph Curry on the outside arch. You know, he loves to shoot the three, and it's o if it's open or not, he'll make them. I mean, he's your guy that you want on the arch open at all times, on like the wing or like on your shoulder right there. He's he's lethal. I mean, he if he's open for three, he's most likely going to hit it. I mean, a couple weeks ago, I mean, he shot, you know, he only missed two out of ten. Like, he shot eight for ten from three, like, and I was like... Uh, but I wasn't surprised because Mitch Muscari is that kind of role player. He finds his role so well in this offense, along with side guys like Wes Dreamer and Bennett Sturts, who love to play the assist game, love to kick it out. And Mitch Muscari is always the guy open for that kick out. So hopeful to see if the Bearcats can utilize Mitch. Um, and we have gotten word that Wes Dreamer has a wrist. He's hurt with a wrist. So yep. we're going to have to see if Coach is going to let him in this game or not or save him for Mo West. But I think Bearcats, even with him or without, I mean, I think we'll be just fine in this game. But it is senior night, and they are going to be honoring West Streamer tonight. Yeah, it'll be a big night for both the men's and women's team. Another big name to look at for the Bearcats, Isaiah Jackson. Yes. Isaiah Jackson leading the team with assists at five assists per game. Right behind him is Ben that starts with four. So you talked about kicking the ball and dishing it out. Isaiah Jackson does just that. That's right. Isaiah Jackson is the playmaker this team needs. And not to only mention, since the last time we've had this broadcast, Byron Alexander is back in the lineup, playing yes. some minutes, had a thunderous yes. two-hand slam Thursday night, another big and a great addition to this Bearcat lineup. I love Byron Alexander, getting to watch him play at Staley, my home <laughs> high school, for three years. I knew he was a baller. I knew he was a player. He, he, he knows the offense, and he's so smart with it as well. So coming into play for a guy like Ben McCollum in the Bearcats, I knew he was going to exceed well. And we were just talking about Isaiah Jackson. He reminds me a lot of Dewan Harris from Kansas. He's not a shoot-first kind of guy. He's get a, I mean, I don't like KU, but I will respect, <laughs> who, I will respect who they got, Wiley. Dewan Harris is one of the most efficient point guards in the whole entire country yeah. dishes the ball out before he wants to shoot I mean he's open for three and he'll kick it out I think Isaiah Jackson is just like that the last game that I got to broadcast a good one winning in double overtime Isaiah Jackson was the game winning score so I think if there's one guy who you're going to rely on the most 
It's Isaiah Jackson. That's yeah. your point guard. He's your one. He's your. If you're a coach like Ben McCollum, you have to be happy with a guy like Isaiah Jackson any day. No doubt about that one, Jackson. And Jackson, you know, we talked about the women's keys to victory. I feel like it's very similar in the aspect of environment. Because the men's game, it just both of them get rowdy, but there's just a, a, a heightened sense of energy or intensity when it comes to the men game. It's, it's almost like there's just there's just a new a new crowd, a new sense of energy, or everyone just you know goes out and, and gets some ice cream or you know gets some coffee during during the, the during the intermission between the games. But just the energy and the intensity Bearcat Nation brings yes. to Bearcat Arena for both games, it, you love to see it, you yes. love to hear it. And so with that being said, what are two other keys to victory you got for this Bearcats men's team? For the men's team tonight, I think it is going to be the kick out. See the guy on the perimeter. If you're going down low and you're going to get double teamed with your help guy coming off from the wing, get it out to him because the Bearcats love to do that. They're one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. I think that they're going to have to rely on the guys who are open on the kick out. Secondly is going to be just knowing where the ball is going to go before you know the play. So if you know West Dreamer's been hot, get it to him. If you know Mitch Muscari's hot, get it to him. And I'm going to throw in one more because rebounding is so important on this team, getting second chance points. I'm going to add rebounding to any pregame just key to play because it's the most important thing in basketball, getting your second chance points and also just being able to get it down, you know, and go coast to coast, get easy points. So those are my keys to victory, Wiley. You know, Jackson, before we conclude our Bearcat pregame show here on the X and on KNWT, let's take a little bit of a quick moment just to talk about some of the seniors for both mm -hmm. squads. Yes. We'll start off with Wes Dreamer. <laughs> Dreamer, a 6'7", 200-pound forward um, from Lincoln East High School out of Alvo, Nebraska. Wes Dreamer having himself a stellar season and is finding himself on the watch list for the inaugural Trevor Hudgens Award. Uh-huh. And, you know, being the Trevor Hudgens Award finalist from Northwest, as Trevor, Hud Trevor Hudgens was before, I think that's super special to find a guy who is kind of carrying that same legacy as Trevor Hudgens did, being that guy from Northwest, <laughs> you know. So watching West Dreamer get to play and getting to, you know, watch him love what he do gets to do, it's been something special because you can just notice that he's not just playing because – he gets to. He, he's playing because he wants to. He has a love for the game that I, I, he's super competitive, and he loves every single second of it. So getting to see him play, super special. Next senior is a 6'5 guard from Geneva, Illinois, Geneva High School, and that is Mitch Muscari. Muscari, one of them guys that we just talked about, kind of, kind of an underdog story where he sat. He sat a little, played a little as a sixth man, and now he's finding himself in the starting lineup. And just what a career Mitch Muscari has been having with the Northwest Bearcats. I think he's been playing his role very well. Ben McCollum knows exactly what he needs to do, and he, he's coached him to that point perfectly. So I think Mitch Muscari is doing all he can, and he's doing. I think he's exceeded that as well. So getting to see him play as well, awesome guy, awesome player, love him. And then we'll go to the women's squad before we round things out. First one, Jillian Fleming, number 22, is a six-foot senior guard from Liberty High School, Kansas City, Missouri, close to close to your roots, Jackson. She's right. she's appeared in 23 games, making three starts, and you know has a career high of 18 assists during the season. Yeah, you know, having a uh, just having bench players like Jillian Fleming definitely helps, and being from my home, Kansas City, and Liberty, which was in the same conference my high school was got to see her play. She's a great role player. She gets thrown into games whenever the team needs her most to make a couple of plays, and she makes them. So having a bench player like Jillian Fleming, awesome. Great career here at Northwest for her as well. Filled her role perfectly. And another big one is a six-foot post player, number 32, Jana Green. Jana comes out of Millard North in Omaha, Nebraska. Jana Green, one of them big posts, one of the big three um, with Kelsey Fields, Jana Green, and then Emma Atwood, who currently is out with an injury, um, hoping to make her return for the MIAA tournament or, yeah. if possible, the NCAA tournament. But yeah. nonetheless, Jana Green, what a season for her. Yes, uh, Jana Green has exceeded all expectations. I mean, you talk about the big three, and we talk about the rebounding here at Northwest. She's been a big part of why second chance opportunities have been a big reason why this women's team wins games. I think she just plays down the post game so well. She gets those and one opportunities, gets to the line. I see her at the line more than anyone in the game. So just seeing her and Kelsey Fields play alongside each other, super special. Yeah, and when you just look at the senior class for both the men's and women's team, really have made an impact on the culture here at Northwest Missouri State, not only on the court, in the classroom, and on the campus. So 
thank you to those seniors who have dedicated your time, your four years, five years, however many years you were here. Um, thank you for dedicating your time here at Northwest Missouri State. Well, that'll wrap it up for the Northwest Missouri State Bearcat pregame show. I'm Wiley Ray. Alongside me is Jackson Phelps. You've been listening to the Bearcat pregame show on KZLX, LP, Maryville, and KNWT TV. And just a little reminder, next week we have Northwest Missouri State taking on Missouri Western here on KZLX and KNWT. Our Cat Vision crew will also be live streaming it, producing it, and directing it through the MIAA network. So that'll be a fun one for both KZLX and KNWT Jackson. Thank you once again for joining me. It's always a pleasure joining you, and hopefully we get to cover another game together this season. And that'll do it here from Bearcat Arena. Once again, I'm Wiley Ray, alongside me, Jackson Phelps, signing off one more time for KZLX and KNWT. Go Cats!